Hey guys and welcome back to another Axis 72 video and in today's video I'm back with another interview and I'm here with Jack Hutsby. Jack, how are we? I'm not too bad, thanks Axel, how you get on? I'm doing great, thank you very much mate. Thank you very much for coming on the channel. Yeah, no worries mate. Like I say, I've uh, been off training a bit so I've got the time for it now. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Good to, hear, good to hear. And so am I right in saying you're a 26 year old super middleweight who's 7 0 and 1? Yeah, that's right. I've had a couple at middle but uh, weight varies. Mm hmm. I'm easy, either of them weights. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice one. Okay, so if you are new around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you do need to like the video, and let's get straight into it. So, I'm going to start off with the question which you always like to start off with. Why did you start boxing? Why did I start? Well, uh, I was a little little naughty as a kid, you know, about 11, 10. I used to go out and uh, stay out all night. Mm -hmm. So, mum and dad decided to, uh, to take me down to the gym. So I kept begging and begging to go down. They're like, oh, no, you know, don't bother going down. Boxing, it's rough. So eventually they gave in, let me go down, and they, I just carried on from there, really, mate. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. So, yeah. Right. Sorry, and so uh, do you remember what happened in your first amateur fight? Yes. Uh, I was against someone called James Slack. I don't think he, he carried on, mm -hmm. but he'd have been about 12. I was about 12. Okay. He was a much shorter lad, mm -hmm. and I remember it was such an easy fight for me because I, I was a lot longer reach, right. uh, so I was just popping him off. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that, that was a fun fight for me. Then I got the hard hit of reality on my second fight right. when I, I was against a much tougher lad, same height as me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, trained a lot harder, mm -hmm. and I got bad on that one. But, like I say, when, when you're younger, you just, yeah. you just go in for fun, don't you? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so, kind of throughout your whole amateur period, what was your biggest achievement? I'd, I'd say uh, the Derbyshire light like, heavyweight belt, mm -hmm. definitely, because uh, it was such a build up to all of the fights. Like yeah. it, it really meant something to me more than anything, any other sort of fight. Mm -hmm. So that that's definitely my achievement. Getting it out right as well, because I, obviously I won. I think I won it four times. So wow. after the third, you get to keep it and okay. go on to defend it. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's good to hear. And so, in how many amateur fights did you end up having? 54 or 56 I think it was okay Done well to remember. don't quote me on it I, <laughs> I've not got my book either because I, I end up giving it to someone and not getting it returned okay so I think around that many mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a good amount and so uh, why did you end up turning professional when you did uh, I, I remember it was for I was going to call I was going to have a fight against someone called Alex Nix mm -hmm. and uh, I was like really you know, I wanted to be really fit for it, so I started going training with Steve Siri okay. uh, in Nottingham, mm -hmm. and then uh, after a while, I, w I won that belt mm -hmm. against Alex. Well, I won that fight against Alex for the belt, mm -hmm. so I retained it. Um, I just ended up. Uh, he asked me the question if I wanted to, and at the time I was like, eh, not really. I want to try and go down the GB route, but okay. in myself, I felt like I didn't have the skill set. As an amateur, like mm -hmm. the amateur style, mm -hmm. so I, I don't think that it took me either way. Mm -hmm. uh, but my coach was certain. My, my old amateur coach was like, "Yeah, stick with it. You'll go down that route." But I think I just wanted to, as I was getting older, I just wanted to go in and try something. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I say, it's a young man's game into it, amateurs, mm -hmm. and you need to be in it with from the start. Mm -hmm. So I just end up going down the professional road. Mm -hmm, that's fair enough and so far things are going very well for you mate and so um, throughout these kind of seven professional fights and seven, seven professional wins you've had which one would you say you've performed your best in? My best? I, I'd probably say against uh, Fernando I, I don't know how you say his last name uh, Fernando he's like a little little Mexican lad I can't remember okay. his last name okay. but he, he was a good lad and I think uh, I come down really light for that fight mm -hmm. So I felt really refueled as well after it. So to be fair with you, like it's just I try and I try new things with each fight uh, mm -hmm. because I'm only new to it really. Mm -hmm. I've only had seven fights trying to get get the weight and cut down and train hard yeah. while you're trying to cut the weight. So it's just trying to uh, trying to find things that work for me really. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely I felt best for him. I felt really good. Mm -hmm. Great. And so I mean, you say that you're kind of always changing up your things and your styles and stuff like that and so would you say that you're constantly improving i'll be dead honest with you sometimes i, I go mm -hmm. i get better sometimes i get worse okay. but that, that's what i'm playing with yeah um so yeah it's just trying to find things like say uh, I, i'm just gonna try and give you an example like i try and do more running towards the start right 
and then less at the end and just mm. mix things up like that but yeah. sometimes I'd feel like I'm more wore out or yeah, yeah. throughout sparring and then that affects of course, yeah. affects learning so yeah it's just things like that mate mm-hmm. definitely definitely I mean things change every day your mindset and everything like that and so what would you kind of say is uh, motivating you at the moment I'll be honest mate at the minute I've not got my head in boxing at the moment so I've got no motivation whatsoever at the minute I've just had a baby moved out got a new job mm-hmm. so I'm just trying to get everything all, all yeah. together uh, get some money back in mm-hmm. do the arse up and then I'm going to get back on it mm-hmm. well I've been looking at some gyms around here because obviously I'm, I'm quite a distance away from my old gyms now okay. so uh, it makes it a bit awkward because with my new job I finished quite late mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah just going to try and get a new local one to get back into within the next couple of months. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, that's fair. And uh, well, I mean, uh, congratulations, and I uh, hope everything's going well with you and your family at the moment. Yeah, it's not too bad. Hard work, I tell you that much. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can imagine so. And so, I don't know if you still will be working with Scott Callow, but if you, I mean, you were for a bit. And what was it like working with him? I- I'm going to stick with uh, with Scott. To be fair, I- I'd always have him at the minimum a manager because okay. he's just uh, he's a good guy to work with. Mm-hmm. I think he he looks after all all of his. Uh, all of his boxes are under him. Yeah. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn away from Scott. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good to see you being loyal. And so, well, I mean, I, you say that you're kind of looking around for gyms and that, and you haven't quite got your mind set fully in boxing at the moment. So do you have a, a possible time when you'd be looking to get back into the ring? Yeah, he, he has offered me a fight come March. Okay. But like, I've just explained to you the yeah. situation. I don't think it's the right thing to take. Yeah, I'd, I'd be, I'd be going off like a, uh, a month, two month training, yeah, yeah. and then straight in, which off of nothing, mm. you have to improve your fitness, lose all this weight I've put on. So uh, <laughs> I want to leave it to probably mid year, I think. Okay. That, that's going to be my plan. Okay, that's fair. And so for anybody who kind of hasn't watched you fight before, what would you say makes you interesting as a fighter? Interesting as a fighter? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not really a cocky guy, to be fair. I, I don't okay. like. Because. Okay. I'd probably say I've I've got a really decent jab. Mm. I I love I love having like a bit of a chess game yeah. with my boxing, and that that's how I see it. I, I don't really go in for power shots at, or knockouts. I've never really bothered yeah, to yeah. try and do that. But I, I just like having a bit of a chess game. Mm-hmm. That's that's the why I find boxing so fun. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. You got to find the enjoyment in what you want to be doing. Yeah, I, just personally, I don't I don't see enjoyment even when in sparring. I don't see it fun trying to go out and knock each other out. Mm. But I try and think more, but yeah. I'm not a very bright lad, so it doesn't work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fair, that's fair. And so, I mean, yeah. you were, like like you said, you're, you're quite early on in your career, and I'm sure when you uh, get back going again, you'll be fully back into it. And so, um, how far do you believe you can go? As far as, as much, I think anyone goes go as far as they want. It just depends mm. how much uh, determination you've got to put yeah. into it. Because at the minute, I've, I'm sort of held back. Well, I'm mentally blocked by having a job and having mm. to get money into. And I always, I've always been like that. I've always put my work over my boxing. Mm-hmm. I think if I, uh, if I had the opportunity to quit work and fully commit to boxing, then I, I could go, you know, uh, top of the game really, mm. top of the game. But same with anyone. I think anyone's got the potential. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely that's fair and so I'll leave with this final question which I always like to ask you've got a little bit of a platform here would you like to shout anything out just everyone that's always come to support me I've, I've, uh, well, I've obviously with boxing that's what you need if you don't get people come to watch your fights mm. you don't get to fight and definitely. everyone's in the same boat with that till you get to a top level and uh, all my sponsors I've had lots of people through the years sponsor me so I'd like to say a massive thanks to them and uh, Lobster Pumps who's uh, He's pretty much been one of my main sponsors all the way through. They helped me pay for pretty much everything and mm-hmm. sort it all out for me. So, really appreciate it for them. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for doing this interview, mate. Maybe a little bit further along down the line, we can come back and do another one. Yeah, mint stuff, mate. Like I say, once I have my, uh, my comeback fight, we can, uh, can have a chat then. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Great. Okay. Um, nice one. And so, if you are new around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you do need like the video. And thanks for watching.